Thank you very much, and good evening. President Hartzell, Chairman Eltaif, members of the faculty and staff, parents and family members, graduates, it is so great to be here all together in one place. And to the class of 2021, congratulations. You got through a year of quarantines, Zoom classes, masks, nasal swabs, and I'm guessing more takeout food than you thought you'd eat in a lifetime, and you're graduating. That's cause for a big celebration under normal circumstances, but this year's commencement is even more special. You know, I've thought a lot about what I would say to all of you tonight, which brought me back to my commencement, which was 48 years ago. I quickly realized I could not remember who the speaker was. I actually think only about 5 to 6 percent of people remember who spoke at their graduation. Now, fortunately, you've all got phones with cameras, so there's a chance half a century from now you look back at the photos you took tonight and remember that I was your speaker. So feel free to snap away. Now, while I don't recall much about that day, what I do remember is that as a young college graduate, I had absolutely no idea where my life would take me. I certainly never dreamed I would one day be asked to give a commencement address. And so to President Hartzell and everyone here, let me say thank you. It truly is an honor and a privilege for me to stand on these hallowed 40 acres and be part of this special day. Now, I also didn't know I was going to have four children, one of whom is here graduating. Now, all right, I'll give his name away. His name is Max. You can guess what his last name is. And he's probably terribly embarrassed that I'm even mentioning him, but how could I not? Sorry, Max, wherever you are. I will simply say that he absolutely loved his time here at UT. And he even has a bit of a Texas accent, I think is a good thing for a kid from California. He received a great education. His mother and I are certainly very thankful for that. And he's also made a number of really wonderful friends. And I'm certain they will remain connected for the rest of their lives. Now, I'm also pleased that Max's brother, Will, has decided to go to UT as well. And so soon, we're going to be a true Longhorn family. Now, today is and will always be one of those significant days in your life. And in many ways, it's an ending, but it's also a beginning, which is probably a bit overwhelming, at least for some of you. There is no doubt this is an extraordinary, somewhat unsettling time to be a young person starting out. There are tough challenges on the global and the community level, and there are no easy answers. But it is an exciting time, too, because our world is changing at a faster pace than many thought was possible. A lot has been disrupted, but so much has been created. There are new industries, there are new businesses, there are new and different jobs, and even exciting new places to find those jobs, like right here in Austin, Texas. In fact, we are immersed in invention and innovation. In these dynamic, rapidly changing times, even with the myriad challenges that we're facing, present great opportunity for your generation. And so tonight, I thought I'd just share some advice, some lessons that I learned along the way to help you make the most of the opportunity. You know, the two questions that I'm asked the most often are, who is your favorite Disney character? For some reason, people are obsessed with that. And the second is, what is the single biggest factor that contributed to my success? Now, the answer to the first question is Tinkerbell with Baby Yoda as a runner-up. That doesn't really matter all that much. The answer to the second, though, is boldness. 
And if ever there is a time for all of you to be bold, it is now. One of the most valuable things that I've learned from my own experiences, as well as from mentors and friends, is that the only way to accomplish meaningful things in life is by acting boldly. Being timid has never gotten anyone anywhere. Of course, boldness is more than just not being timid. It means taking swift, significant action in the face of fear and uncertainty. It means standing with courage and conviction, particularly when confronted with tough or unpopular choices. And it means living, or having an unwavering commitment to honesty, integrity, and just doing the right thing. It means having a deep and abiding curiosity about people, places, ideas, and just the sheer willingness to try something new. And being bold also requires ambition and a willingness to dream big. Because when you're in your early 20s, as many of you are, there just is no such thing as having dreams that are too big. Your possibilities are enormous. So my advice, be optimistic, be confident, have faith in yourself and in your abilities, and believe that your dreams are achievable, and don't let anyone tell you they're not. Now, you also need to be resilient, something you've heard a lot about recently. Fortunately, you've already proven that you are after getting through what has been an historically difficult year and graduating. But all of these qualities, resiliency, ambition, curiosity, optimism, and a willingness to dream big will serve you well and enable you not only to make the most of opportunities, but also to contend with other challenges, including failure. And by the way, failure is not the end of the road or even the end of the world. Now, when I was your age, quick story, I wanted to be a network anchor man. And after graduating from college, I got a job at a small TV station as a weatherman and planned to work my way up. Now, unfortunately, I quickly realized I was a terrible weatherman. I didn't have a chance at fulfilling my ultimate dream. So at the age of 23, I decided to quit my job, do something completely different. It was a fairly bold move because I had no idea what the future held. And fortunately, I got a job at ABC as a low-level, I mean a really low-level production assistant. But not long afterwards, my boss called me into his office and told me I was unpromotable, <laughs> giving me just two weeks to find another job. 23 years old, and my boss tells me I'm not promotable. My career was off to a bit of a rough start, it would seem. My first two years, I failed as a weatherman, and then the guy I worked for told me I wasn't good enough to ever get, ever get the next job. Now, fortunately, he was wrong. I did get another job, a promotion, and the rest is history. But the fact is, there will be setbacks and naysayers along the way for you. But so what? That just happens to be life. Nearly every successful person that I know has struggled or failed at some point. Steve Jobs was fired from Apple, the company he founded. And the guy who made the decision since called it one of the biggest regrets of his life. No kidding. Walt Disney was fired from one of his first jobs as a newspaper artist because he lacked imagination and he had no original ideas, something that's also kind of hard to believe. Now, Walt failed a number of times over the years. However, always the optimist, he never stopped dreaming big and being bold. And I'm proud to say that we have continued his legacy. In fact, as President Hartzell noted in his generous introduction, we've been bold deal makers throughout my tenure. 
But the real heart of our boldness has always rested in our storytelling. Some years back, the talented team at Pixar pitched us a film about a very special cultural tradition of Mexico's Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. It was filled with colorful characters, folk art, great authentic music, and it was all set in a textured and really beautiful world. And then we heard from skeptics who thought it was too narrow and so culturally dependent that it would never resonate globally. Turns out the opposite proved true. Coco touched people's hearts everywhere it was released because it celebrated diversity. And it celebrated the diversity of the human experience and the beauty and the liveliness of the Mexican culture. Now, a similar situation arose soon after. And I know many of you saw this film, Marvel's Black Panther, which happens to be the film I'm most proud of. It was pitched by a talented black director named Ryan Coogler as a black superhero story with a predominantly black cast. And once again, many people believed it would fail. Of course, they were completely wrong. Black Panther was groundbreaking, hugely successful film that became a cultural phenomenon and a powerful force for good. One bold decision changed the pe way people see heroes and had a lasting impact on the world. So no matter how you choose to contribute, whether through the stories you tell, the career you pursue, or the important changes that you help bring about, our world needs your generation to be bold, to take on ambitious projects, to address the challenges facing us today. And not just on a grand scale. Just imagine if everyone in your generation did just one bold thing, even something relatively small, the collective power of those millions of actions would be massive. And if any of you doubt your power, just look at all you've accomplished right here at UT. Look, for example, at the incredible work you've done in response to the most pressing challenge of our time, the COVID-19 virus. You've developed critical parts of the vaccine in your research labs, and you've played a key role in getting local communities including underrepresented communities vaccinated. As we heard earlier, what starts here changes the world, and you are already doing it. Now you leave here today arguably better able and better equipped to change the world than any generation before you. Thanks to the amazing technological tools at your disposal, tools that you are adept at using. Use them to construct, not destruct. Build understanding, respect, tolerance. Be bold and fight the evils of hatred and contempt. And just be a force for good in our world to help ensure that all people have access to the kinds of opportunities that may lead to greater fulfillment, satisfaction, success. Be builders and not destroyers of truth and civility. And never stop believing that you can make a difference. Steve Jobs said, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. You know, one of the most curious things about life is the speed with which it passes. I know this is a hard concept for young people to grasp, which is one of the reasons why we don't try to teach you this. But just think about how fast your time at UT flew by. And here I am at 70, and it feels like just yesterday that I was 22 years old with big plans and a lifetime to accomplish them. Looking back, I could never have imagined I would have the incredible opportunities I've had over the years. And I think it's been quite a journey and one I'm exceedingly grateful. 
Now, all of you have so much of life ahead of you. And while I'm exhorting you to be doers, to get out there and change the world, I also hope you enjoy the experience. Sure, there are going to be tough days, perhaps some really tough days, but there will also be lots of good days, lots of great days, and tons of pleasant experiences and surprises, like meeting the love of your life, who most of you haven't met yet, or having children, or discovering a passion, or finding a great job that leads to a great career. As I reflect on my life, I hesitate to suggest I would change much because it's been really good to me. But I know this, if I could do it all over again, I would take time to appreciate things more. It's the equivalent of smelling the roses, but it's more than that. It's not sweating little things or getting mad at petty nonsense. It's not about wasting time, but it's about having license to be frivolous ever so often. It's that incredibly valuable ability to savor the beauty of your life and all of the happy, fulfilling, and cool parts of it. So my sincere hope is that all of you will embrace life and embrace it enthusiastically. Enjoy the beauty of a summer's day or the most delicious pizza you've ever eaten. I, I happen to love pizza. That's my equivalent of smelling the roses. Go for a spin on your bike, take salsa lessons, eat dessert, go to Disneyland. <laughs> and don't just wait for those opportunities to present themselves. Be adventurous, be curious. Try new things, especially things you never imagined you would or could do. And most important, cherish the relationships you have with the people in your lives. Invest in those relationships. Coach your children's soccer team. Take a road trip with friends. And remember to call home and talk to your friends every once in a while, and your folks. Now I promise you will not regret a minute that you spend with the people you love. Now this may surprise you, but I would trade places with any one of you in a heartbeat and do it all over again, because life is an unexpected, exhilarating, fulfilling adventure. So my advice to all of you as you embark on that adventure is be bold. Don't be in the business of playing it safe. Be in the business of creating possibilities for greatness. And dream big. Be optimistic. If your first dream doesn't come true, find another one and pursue it with equal conviction. And speak up, speak the truth, even when it's difficult for others to hear. Help solve humanity's most complex and pressing issues through your words and your actions. Use technology to heal, not to harm, and be a force for good in our world because there is so much that needs fixing. And along the way, be sure to embrace life. Live it to the fullest, have fun, appreciate every single moment, and start now. The brilliant essayist and author E.B. White wrote, I arise in the morning torn between the desire to improve the world and the desire to change the world. Improve the world and enjoy the world. I encourage all of you to strive each day of your lives to do both. Today is a wonderful, joyous, happy day. We're grateful to all be here celebrating together and celebrating your incredible achievements. We're very proud of all of you. Rejoice in this moment, savor it, congratulations, and hook em horns. Thank you.